Hey everyone, this is Martin from howtomakemobilegames.com on February the 22nd, 2018. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Blue Ocean Strategy. And Blue Ocean Strategy, if, uh, if you're not aware of what that is, is the idea of the only way to win in business is to not compete. And Blue Ocean Strategy it comes from the uh, title of a book called, I think it's actually called Blue Ocean Strategy. I'd looked at it yesterday and I'd, I'd read, I think probably around half of it a few years back when I was in EA. Uh, but more recently, I'd also read uh, Zero to One, or listened to it through, as an audio book. Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Uh, I think that's how his name's pronounced. And he was one of the founders of PayPal. And sort of the main kind of... Uh, point of the books and what they're discussing is that in order to win in business, in order to get ahead, you have to not compete. You have to create something new, something completely different. Um, but in the initial stages, it doesn't have to be so different that nobody knows what it is, but it has to be differentiated, you know? It can't just be the same thing. It can't just be, I think the phrase is like cutty cooker, cu cookie cutter. Um, products, you know, it's the same as the same as this last company. Um, in games, especially, well, with with Cobalt Play, the the company that I'd, I'd been working on as my business for the past six, seven years, uh, maybe eight years now. Um, that that was very much like that cookie cutter approach. So it was just trying to, you know do something similar to what we'd already done before, the same type of game, or making another game that was already out there. It, it might be a slightly different approach, you know, it might be a different genre, or, uh, sorry, it might be like slightly different in terms of, oh, it's an FPS, but it's, you know, it, it, it's teddy bears or something. But really, it was just, we were just competing in a space that was way, way too competitive. Um, and so it kind of raises the question of, in business, should you do something completely new? But not so new that, again, not so new that people don't know what the heck it is. I think a good example was uh, Cirque du Soleil, um, which, uh, which they mentioned was started in around, I think they said 1986. And the idea was to bring the, the circus to a whole new audience, i.e. adults, because it had been mainly focused at kids uh, for, for a long time and now Cirque du Soleil is obviously you know worldwide famous and um, kids and adults like you know both love it uh, Uber another great example people using their cars to you know share drives and make money and also people get cheaper cheaper taxis that way uh, at least I think it's a bit cheaper I'm, I'm not sure I've never actually taken an Uber but it was an untapped market and it hadn't really been done before, at, to, at least to a large scale as far as I'm aware. PayPal uh, was one of the first, if not the first, um, company to allow uh, online quick transfers. I think it was email to email. They had originally done a, a, a similar company, I think it was Peter Thiel, had originally done a similar company, or it might have been PayPal, where they were focused on Palm Pilot transfers. Uh, and back then, I think maybe in the late 90s, Palm Pilots were not very popular. Um, but email was, was, you know, was um, was becoming mainstream at that point. It was very normal to, for people to use email. And it hadn't been around. So when, when it comes to games, uh, my, my feelings are that you're always going to be competing in a very... With, in a very competitive landscape. There's already games out there. You might say, well, our game is a little bit different, or it's, it's a game. It's a game at the end of the day. If, if Unless it's doing something very, very unique, or the business model is unique, the model of just putting a, creating a game and hoping that it'll, it'll sell, it, you know, put it up on the stores like Steam, and hoping that it'll sell, I think is, is just not going to happen. It's um, A business model that might work is if you've got a publishing deal with, say, Sony, you know, PlayStation or Nintendo, because they have the channel, they have the console, they have the distribution, they have the, 
they have the marketplace, obviously they can give you the publishing rights to actually put your, you know, your physical box uh, in the stores and people can see it and it can make money that way. Uh, is that a long lasting, a long lasting business? I don't know uh, because the power is kind of out of your hands because you're relying solely on those console manufacturers like Sony or Xbox, Microsoft to say yes, we'd like you to publish your game onto our console. And if they say no, then you're really kind of screwed. And that was a story that um, had uh, had uh, I'd spoken to recently. Uh, he mentioned a similar story for uh, a friend of mine where they had um, uh, they were waiting for one of the companies to get back to them. I can't obviously name specifics, but they didn't. And then, you know, they were screwed because they'd spent time and money and now they had no way, no channel. So, you know, that, that's a different video talking about making sure that you have control, full control over your sales pipeline. You know, going through app stores, going through uh, console stores, going through Amazon, you know, uh, as in as in the, the Amazon resale online store. That's all very risky if your if your business solely depends on that. Now it's no problem if you're if you're spread out, you know, you have your own direct distribution channel and you have Amazon, absolutely hundred percent hundred percent go for that but if it's just one channel you're really at risk as a business and, and we found that recently when chart boost cancelled our account uh, chart boost for those of you who don't know is a mobile game ad network uh, and most of our money for the other business that we had in China uh, have in China was making most of its daily revenue through that chart boost account and now they just cancelled it no warning I mean, what we're going to do, like lawyer up and go over there and knock the door down and sue them? No, we're not. We can't do that. We're not. We're not a big company. Uh, that would be just, you know, impossible for us. Uh, but Blue Ocean Strategy. So I've been thinking a lot about that recently because for so long now, six, seven years, I've been competing in games and I've just been fighting with every other game developer out there. We have just been fighting, fighting, fighting each other to try and get the users, to try and get the ranks, to try and get retention, and, and we're all just making the same experience, a game. And granted, obviously, games are different one to the other, but essentially all, all, all games do is solve the problem of entertainment, but that problem has already been solved. Unless you're building, say, like a training game, for example, and you're selling that directly to a company, who, like I'm looking at trucks, like truck drivers right now, you know, you sell a, you sell a game to, to teach people how to drive a truck, you know, like that. I don't know if that's unique or not. Um, I don't know if it's necessary, but it, it is, I, I believe that's different. You know, I've not heard of that before. Um, it's, it's probably not something that's available on the store. I know you do get truck simulator games, but I'm talking about like a VR experience where you sell a training, a full, training package for truck drivers you know just as an example a casino I'm looking at a casino now over the road um, casino games are or are uh, are also kind of a saturated market from what I understand if you approach the casino and say hey we've got these progressive slot machines there are already a million you know of those out there um, now it may not be as saturated as the app stores but one of the points that uh, Peter Thiel made in his book is finding value where nobody thought val there was value before. Airbnb is another great example. Another great example. People renting out their rooms to strangers as like a hotel room and they make money on the space that they have. That's just, that's great. Um, the Nobody thought that was possible because, you know, nobody wanted to openly give out their, oh, where am I going? Where am I going? Ah, where am I going? Okay, <laughs> I'm still figuring out these new road, this new route, guys. He thought nobody's going to rent out space for their room, but hey, they did, and they do, and they make great money, I believe. Um, everybody knows Airbnb now, and it's even become a, you know a sort of a verb like oh Airbnb it, like Google. Google uh, was you know back in sort of 90s, late 90s, was obviously competing with Yahoo and um, I think. Uh, sites like Excite and so on um, but it wasn't the competitive landscape at least I don't believe that we have now in, in games where there's just 
way, way too many games. There are far, far, far too many games. And so the only way to compete is the only way to win the competition is to not be in the competition. You know, the only way to win the game is to not be in the game. So trying to build something completely different. Um, at the moment, I'm working on a, uh, a sort of location based app it's not a game it's, it's an app with messaging whereby you can see all of your family and friends uh, on the map and then message them you know where all your family and friends are and I, now that's been done before so I've got to I've got to figure out something new uh, in terms of maybe a specific market or like we said an area of value where perhaps it hadn't been discovered before and I've got a few ideas in my head but it it's, um, I'm trying to do something different, is what I mean. I'm trying to not compete. I'm trying to, I know that those types of games and those apps have existed already, of course they do. Uh, I've seen a couple of examples. You can share your location through Google Maps, that allows you to do that. Um, but at least, at least it's, it, it's, I'm trying to get into the area of not being not competing you know by making another tower defense game or something like that you know or, or another fps game um the, the the basis of of you know maps and messaging can be adapted and i've got a, like i said a few different ideas on how to do that and what to and what to build um having a particular focus you know, like maybe a, a service. I don't like the word app, though. I, said, <laughs> I don't like the word app. You know, you know why? Because when I think an app, I think cheap. And I think I think that an app is just something that you just put on the store, and that's your little button, and then that is fully controlled by Google or iOS, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, that's just your app is on their store, and that's what your app is. I think... Perhaps I should rethink it as a service, you know? I'm building a service which has an app. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, Uber, um, you know, or Airbnb is a service which allows people to rent out their home space to people who need a space to sleep for the night. It's not an app. Airbnb is not an app, you know? Although they do have an app. So I think I've got to get out of that frame of mind of thinking about apps because it just the idea of apps is just is no control uh, in terms of distribution and it's completely out of my hands whether people download it or not um, obviously I can market it but they can take it down in a heartbeat oh traffic's really good today oh that's really weird the tra sorry guys the trail off the traffic was uh, was actually smooth today that's, uh, that's nice but not building an app, but more building a service and thinking about distribution. The, the other thing as well is got to think about, I've got to think about is, is who to market to. Um, that's really important. I think, you know, who, who is it that I'm marketing to? Is it, is it like, th this isn't what I'm going to do, but for example, if you were, you know, track your lover or something, you know, see where your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife are, you know, you could, you could kind of approach it from that angle, but I, I, I don't really want to, to be honest. Um, it's not. It's 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 a an open social messaging service. It's not a you know uh, sneakily install an APK on their phone that gets hidden and you know where they are. It's not what I'm doing. Um, although that that is a business model as well that exists, and uh, I don't know if it's super competitive or not. But going back to the main point of this video, guys. Uh, thinking about things that haven't been done before. Obviously, if something hasn't been done before, it doesn't necessarily mean it's got value. Of course not. Uh, a great example, again, by uh, Peter Thiel uh, in, in uh, Zero to One, the book, uh, which I definitely recommend, by the way. Uh, eventually, guys, I'll have an audible link in, in the description, I hope. Uh, so check out the link in the description. It's, it's going to be an affiliate link. Um, too audible, but they're like the audio, the big audio book site, I definitely recommend it. Um, and uh, I'll continue to recommend books that I listen to as well, specifically around business. Uh, but he made the point of uh, Jay-Z, a movie about with Jay-Z 
where he's trying to find the shark that killed his brother and he uses a bunch of hackers to find it. Now that's never been done before, at least to my knowledge, ever. Uh, completely unique, total blue ocean, uh, but there's a reason why that hasn't been done before. <laughs> you know, it's not a good idea. It's really not. It doesn't sound like a good idea. So just because something hasn't been done does not mean that it's a good idea to do. Of course, you have to think about, well, it's never been done before. Okay, well, that's that's only part of the puzzle. Uh, you, you maybe come from the angle of, this is being done right now, it makes money, but it needs to be improved. That's another good approach. If I make a match three game, it's already been done a gazillion times and has been done to a high level of polish. Yeah, I cannot compete with Candy Crush Saga or, I don't know, Robbio's next match three game. I think they, I think they do have a, match, a new match three game. It just isn't gonna happen. Um, but if there's a service out there where you could definitely use improvement, that is a good model, especially when the consumer is used to paying money for it. You're not trying to convince people that they have to pay for something and, and where's the value. Again, Uber, people expect to pay for a taxi ride. It's expected, they know they have to pay for it. You don't have to convince anybody that a taxi ride costs money. That's great. It's an already educated market. Um, trying to educate the market is extremely difficult. Airbnb, again, of course you, you, uh, a room costs money to rent. Everybody knows that. Fuel and cars. Anything where there's less resistance, you know? For example, like um, uh, the stock market or gambling. Everybody knows you've got to pay for it. You've got to pay for gambling. You can't win money without betting money. You've got to. And that's, that's great because you're not trying to educate the market. Uh, if you're trying to convince people about this social app that you've got, you know, again, I hate the word app. <laughs> or I know I hate it, I've just started to, I need to move away from that. I'm, if I try and convince people, oh, this social app lets you talk with people and you've got to pay $10 a month, why would they? They don't need to. They've already got services that can, that can kind of do that, but because they're not used to paying for that kind of thing, there's gonna be a lot of market resistance. Whereas if I build a service that, say, I don't know, lets you get food from the supermarket, which is going, which is gonna be thrown away, but it's still, it's still healthy, it's still, um, it's not gone by, it's not gone past its sell by date, but a service that allows people to uh, know where this supermarket is and where they're gonna throw away a bunch of food so you can get food super cheap that is about to go off in the next few days, then yeah, maybe they would know, they would realize that obviously there's value in that, obviously there's value in that, or a service that helps you get a cheaper something, or, you know, I don't know, um, a cheaper dentists, for example, just for, uh, pulling examples out of the air. People know that you have to pay for a dentist, especially it's a very expensive uh, service here in England it's not under the NHS um, so if you pay for a dentist it can cost hundreds of pounds if you can build a service again service that has an app which shows people where to get cheap dental care or something um, just as an example yeah there's value in that now you could be as that service you could either charge the person directly or you charge the dental practice directly uh, through the service or the app or you just, uh, you become the middleman, whereby you, uh, like Airbnb or Uber, you take a percentage of any transaction. And again, that's a great thing because you're not trying to, you're not charging anybody for your app or service, you're charging them for the dental care because you're, or they're charging themselves for dental care because they know already, you don't have to educate the market, they already know that it costs money to get your teeth fixed. You don't have to convince anybody, you know what I mean? You're just saying, hey, you can pay a thousand pounds for to get your teeth fixed, or you can use our service and you can find it for 700 pounds and we take 1%. Yeah, of course, it's obvious, it's, it's a no-brainer, I would love to do that. Yeah, and I just, I pay an extra 1%, so what, seven pound, um, and I save 299 pounds. So, 
obviously. So things like that, guys, where you're facilitating something which maybe already exists, but could be done better or ways to improve it or cheap finding cheaper fuel or something. So that's where I'm, I'm trying to kind of go with this service that I'm building now. And not just a social thing, because I can't charge for a social thing. Uh, obviously there are ways putting ads and in-app purchases and all that stuff, but I don't see it as being a long-term kind of expandable thing. Um, and it's very competitive. Things like Facebook, obviously Twitter are already there doing that kind of stuff. So, uh, but yeah, the only way to win is to not compete. The only way to win the game is to not play the game. I think it's a great message. Uh, guys, definitely, if you've seen this video later at some point, I'll put the links in the description for those audiobooks on Audible. Those are affiliate links, uh, so I do make a little bit of commission. Eventually, I, I need to get that set up, but eventually, uh, check out the links um, on Audible. Uh, I'm going to be listening to more business books because I think, you know, this time that I'm spending in the car, commuting back and forth, uh, it's, it's, um, I'm trying to use it as best as I can and, um, hopefully share some inspiration for you guys and get inspired myself. But guys, have an awesome week wherever you are. Have a great week developing if you're doing games and I will catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.